Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we're talking about Inkscape. Now Inkscape is an open source vector graphics based application, it's cross-platform, and it hit a couple of major milestones today. There were two releases, one for their stable branch, and more importantly, the 1.0 branch just reached alpha. This is the first publicly available release of Inkscape 1.0, and there's been a lot of changes under the hood. Now to be honest, I've never been a big fan of Inkscape because the performance has been so bad in the past. And frankly, 1.0 has seen a lot of improvements as we are going to see in just a second. In fact, we're gonna jump in, we'll take a look at Inkscape and what has changed, the immediately huge changes, and then we'll look at the details of both of these releases. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right in and take a look. We're gonna look at Inkscape 9.24, that's the new version um, available of the stable branch, and then we're gonna look at the 1.0 branch and look at some of the performance tweaks. So here we are with, uh, I think, the nine point, no, oh, oh, this is the alpha. Okay, so I wanna to switch to the other version. So this here is nine point, uh, try that again. All right, here we go. So this is the nine two release. Um, and now let us take a look at the performance. And this is again, the biggest reason why I was never really a fan in the past. I've got this scimitar selected, made up of a bunch of different compound objects. And I'm just gonna move it around. And you see this drawing, the update, that is, nearly useless and this is not an incredibly complicated scene but that is that is just not that useful so let's switch over to the 1.0 release grab the same scimitar and give it a second for focus and there you see the performance difference and that is still it could use some improvement but again we're talking about an alpha here but look how much smoother that is in moving around so that is smooth that is usable it's the kind of environment that you can actually work with and borderline useless so that is hands down to me the biggest improvement in uh, the new release, but by no means is that it. So I'm just gonna shut down the 9.2 release and I'm gonna show you another thing. And this is one of those things that a lot of people have been clamoring for. Personally, I don't care that much, but I know people that love theming, love theming. So now you can come in here, you can go to interface and you can go to themes. Now this was not available in the earlier releases. And what it enables you to do is switch between different modes. And I know the one, I don't know why it switches off of it immediately, but you see here, we've got your dark mode. People love their dark mode. I, again, I don't, really care that much, but I know for the people that wanted theming, um, this option is going to be pretty huge. And then obviously you see these all these other different settings there. Now, another thing that was big in this particular release, especially more and more important in this day and age, is that high DPI support is finally here. Now, Inkscape on a 4K monitor was borderline useless before. Uh, they started adding some better icon sets, so it got a little bit better, but with the 1.0 release, high DPI support is fully blown and actually here. All right, so that is the kind of the overview the big things that I really like. Again, this performance is so much more useful and that theming, I know a lot of people have been waiting for a dark mode or customization. And again, high DPI is another thing that people have really been waiting for, but there is more to this particular release. So let's get into the nitty gritty. Uh, so first off we have, they're announcing the launch of the 92.4 release and then the 1.0 alpha. Under the 92.4 release, we've seen align multiple objects uh, as a group relative to a single object, write image data to standard output and read from it, experience extensions working faster with complex documents, see improved speed when deselecting a path with many nodes, ungrouped text elements won't result in changed font size of children, able to print correct paper sizes with printers, uh, improved performance of measure tool, uh, proper opacity on uh, partially transparent embedded bitmaps, um, shapes without crashing, and build Inkscape up to date uh, oh yeah, one other big thing that they've added here on this particular version, I'm gonna bring it back up. So I think it's Control Shift, yeah. So you can now rotate your canvas. Control Shift, middle mouse button. And this is another thing that people have been really looking for. So if you want to rotate the canvas that you're working on, that option is now built in. And as you once again saw, the performance is so much better. And this is gonna make Inkscape so much more useful ultimately. So. That's the 924 release, let's move on. Um, so if you wanna grab 924, it's straightforward. Just go ahead, click into the download section and you'll see it is available in binary form for GNU Linux, Windows, 
and um, oh, I don't know where the Mac build is because uh, I know that Mac builds are somewhat newish, uh, but I believe there is a Mac build there as available as well. Now we're gonna move on to the 1.0 release. This is the alpha release, and we've already seen some of the major features here. The improved performance, the rotating of your canvas, and theming are things that everybody's waiting for. Same with HDPI. So you saw that. You can also move your origin so that the 00, zero coordinate is the top left if you so prefer. Uh, canvas rotation we just saw, high DPI support, uh, control width of power stroke with pressure sensitive graphics tablet, fillet chamfer at LPE and Boolean operation LPE, new PNG options, path operations in deselection of a large number of paths are now much faster, and variable fonts. Now on top of that, I am just basically going to the highlight section. I will link this down below, but you can skip full details of what is coming in the 1.0 release. There is a whole lot more than is just in the top level summary. But again, for me, huge, the hands down, it's that improved performance that makes Inkscape actually usable in my humble opinion. Now, one of the downsides though, if you wanna get a hold of Inkscape right now, it is actually only available uh, for Linux. There is no binary version available for Windows or Mac OS. Um, you have to build from source code. Now the source code itself, and again, I will link to this, is hosted on GitLab. Um, and it's kind of a pain in the butt to build it. You need to set up like a SigWin-based uh, Ming GW uh, compiler environment and so on and so forth. Um, so what I've actually done, if you're interested in it and you trust me, um, I've created a binary. I'll share it on Dropbox. Basically, this is just a zip file. Uh, follow the link in. And this is literally for just this build. So this isn't a link I'm going to keep around for a long time. But this is the version I built myself. Um, so if you want a binary, I will share the link to a Dropbox link. Um, don't drill into it because then you're actually going to be drilling into the actual zip file itself. Um, go straight to the link and then pick a download and direct download it to somewhere. Um, but this is the version I am running myself. If you're interested in getting up and going uh, with the Inkscape without having to build it yourself, I am compiled. I have compiled a 64-bit Windows binary, so I know the majority of you are running Windows according to YouTube Analytics. So if you want to check out Inkscape, especially if you want to compare the performance based off, you know, compared to earlier versions, I do have that binary available to you. Again, absolutely no warranties. I am not doing any malicious stuff, but I'm not going to promise you that Inkscape works flawlessly nor are there any guarantees if you use that guy. Uh, but this, again, it's the version that I'm using. If you want to grab it, go ahead, just simply download it, uh, extract out that zip file or the 7z file and the executables inside if you are interested. But uh, it's up to you. And again, I will toss a link in with all of the... Um, uh, the details you've got here. There's also a link here that shows you how to, um, oops, that's the actual code. This here is the instruction set I used on getting up and running. Now you'll notice when you go to the Inkscape page, they have an archive available of the source code. That source code does not work on Windows, by the way. So make sure you do a GitHub or a GitLab pull. So do a Git pull as described here. So um, what you've got here is they're saying uh, Git clone and then this command, this is exactly what you wanna do, but instead of grabbing the master branch, what you want to do is grab the, it's down here somewhere. It's obvious when you find it, uh, but yeah, here we go. You want to grab Inkscape underscore one underscore zero underscore alpha. And that's the one, that's the source code branch you actually want to build. Uh, so don't use the pre-compiled zip file that they give you up here. It, it simply doesn't work. I forget exactly where it was, but um, there's a zip available for getting started with the source code for a 1.0. And that, yeah, I think that's it right there. Uh, it does not work, period. So the link here, uh, I tried to compile, there are dependency problems. Make sure you grab from the GitLab uh, branch. Also, again, keep in mind, uh, if you are working from Linux, they do provide an app image uh, file in this particular document here. So that is Inkscape 1.0 alpha and 9.24 point something I've already forgotten. Um, the one is definitely an incremental improvement, but with the 1.0 alpha, that is what is going to make Inkscape legitimately useful again, in my opinion. Now, personally, I, I am absolutely in love with Affinity Designer and I'm sticking with Affinity Designer, but I know there are a number of Inkscape users out there and this is a very good improvement. The fact that it runs on modern hardware on 4K displays and it runs faster and smoother, that I think those were the biggest complaints that people had with Inkscape. There's still a little confusion. There, there are 
the chaining of their user interface can get a little confusing. The icons have definitely improved. High DPI support is really nice, but there's still some usability stuff that they can work on here. But 1.0 is going to provide them a very good base. So it's going to be interesting to see. This is just the alpha version too. So by the time that 1.0 final ships, it looks like the underlying core, the GTK core that they built on top of performs much faster, much smoother. So in time, hopefully we will just see Inkscape get better and better and better. But this is definitely a big step forward. And if you are working with a pure open source kind of development environment, this is the preeminent open source um, vector-based graphics package. And it did get a whole lot better with this particular release. All right, so that is it. That is Inkscape 1.0 Alpha. And um, yeah, let me know what you think down below. Do you use Inkscape now? Is the performance the biggest issue you have like I do? And if so, is this change uh, good enough? Again, there, there's still some performance lag here, but it's not stuttering or awful to move things around. You can actually work with things. Is that a big deal to you? Or have you never really run into performance problems somehow in the past? Interested in hearing what you got to say? Comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.